Hello, my name is Nishat Noor and you're watching Millennium Headlines. This week's top headlines are Israel agrees to pause an assault on Gaza as ceasefire deal is pursued. Russia steps up health for rebels in Ukraine war. Obama presses Central American leaders to slow away from child migrants. Disturbed items at Flight 17 site add to growing reports of tampering. Black box found in Air Algeria, Flight AH-5017 wreckage, 116 killed and crashed. Plane returns to Toronto after passing new threats to bomb Canada. And Prime Minister to Media Saturday. Now the details to this week's top headlines. to halt this military offensive in Gaza for 12 hours, starting Saturday morning amid intense international efforts to seal a broader ceasefire deal and a new explosion of violence in the West Bank. Israel agreed to halt its military offensive in Gaza for 12 hours starting last Saturday. The announcement by the military came early Saturday, hours after Israel's security cabinet rejected Secretary of State John Kerry's proposal for a seven-day ceasefire in Gaza and further talks, according to a minister who attended the meeting. But a senior Israeli official said later that the security cabinet had expressed its position in principle on some initial draft proposals that were not formally presented, and the Israel would continue to work with Mr. Kerry, indicating that the door was still open for more comprehensive agreement. The whole world is watching a tragic moment after tragic moment unfold and wondering when is everybody going to come to their senses. According to Israeli news media, Hamas also agreed to initial 12 hours lull. The military's statement also said that its effort to locate and destroy tunnels used by Hamas would continue. Till today, 856 Palestinians died and 40 Israeli people died. Millennium TV, Naim Mohammed. Rather than backing down after last week's downing of a civilian passenger jet, Russia appears to be intervening more aggressively in the war in eastern Ukraine in what American and Ukrainians call a dangerous escalation that will almost certainly force more robust retaliation from the United States and Europe. Rather than backing down after last week's downing of a civilian passenger jet, Russia appears to be intervening more aggressively in the war in eastern Ukraine. Russia has increased its direct involvement in fighting between the Ukrainian military and separatist insurgents, moving more of its own troops to the border and preparing to arm the rebels with ever more potent weapons, including high-powered tornado rocket launchers, American and Ukrainian officials said on Friday. The official said that Russia had positioned heavy weapons including tanks and other combat vehicles at several points along the border where there has been intense fighting. On Thursday, Russia unleashed artillery attacks on eastern Ukraine from Russia territory. Officials in Washington and Kiev said that. While Russia flatly denied its intervening on Friday, American and Ukrainian officials said Moscow appeared anxious to stem gains by government forces that have succeeded in retaking some rebel-held territory. Millennium TV, Naim Mohammed. Obama on Friday urged the presidents of Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador to exercise what he called their shared responsibility to help stem the flow of migrant children toward the United States border. We all recognize that we have to do more to address the root causes uh, of the problem, uh, and that includes poverty and, and violence in Central America. Uh, I discussed this when I met with uh, uh, Central American leaders last year in Costa Rica, uh, and uh, we are uh, committed to working together in partnership with each of these countries uh, to find ways in which we can come up with more aggressive action plans uh, to improve security uh, and development and governance uh, in these countries. Uh, I express to them that we have a shared responsibility, for example, when it comes to dealing with uh, drug trafficking, uh, that we are dealing with uh, the demand for drugs in the United States and, and doing more to stop uh, the cross-border flows of arms, for example, uh, from the north to the south. Uh, and I also uh, continue to emphasize the fact that uh, not just if, but when we pass comprehensive immigration reform in this country, uh, then we will have the capacity not only to strengthen resources at our borders, but we're also going to have the capacity 
uh, to create more orderly ways for legal migration, uh, in some cases uh, temporary uh, worker programs uh, that allow people to uh, advance economically, uh, allow our economy to grow, allow families to be reunified, uh, but also in many cases allow people to return to their families uh, in their home countries. Investigators examining wreckage of the Malaysia Airlines Flight 17, Ukraine ceded control of the inquiry to the Netherlands, which has been monitoring the bank accounts of the crash victims. European monitors on Friday indicated for the first time that credit and debit cards belonging to the people who died on Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 in eastern Ukraine had been moved inappropriately, though it was unclear whether anybody had tried to use them. Debris from Flight 17 spilled over dozens of square miles, extending across sunflower fields, forests, and villages. The huge site is almost wholly unguarded, though pro-Russian militants who control it have denied that looting has been allowed. The movement of credit cards was the the latest sign of tampering with the wreckage in ways large and small. The United States and Ukraine say the airline was shot down by a surface-to-air missile likely supplied by Russia. The monitoring mission from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe visits the site daily, though it has no control over it. On Friday, the group found cards and passports at two locations where they had not been seen before. Naim Mohammed, Millennium TV. President Franklin's Holland said troops did not find any survivors in the disintegrated wreckage in the Mali desert. A cause has not been determined, but the plane did ask to swap routes due to bad weather just before it lost contact with ground crews. French President Francois Hollande said troops didn't find any survivors in the disintegrated wreckage of Air Algerie Flight AH-5017. French troops found a black box, but no survivors, in the African desert where Air Algerie Flight AH-5017 crashed last Thursday. French President Francois Hollande said troops clearly identified the MD-83 aircraft despite its state of disintegration. 51 of the 110 passengers on the jet were French citizens. Investigators have not determined a cause for the crash, but the last message the plane sent to the ground control asked permission to change route due to a bad weather. Naim Mohammed, Millennium TV. A crazy Canadian man on board a commercial airplane cruising above West Virginia threatened to bomb his own country, forcing the pilot to turn around as two American fighter jets escorted the plane back to Toronto. Last Friday, a crazed Canadian man on board a commercial airplane threatened to bomb his own country. The pilots decided to turn the flight, with 183 passengers and six crew members aboard, back to Canada, while F-16 fighter jets on a training run outside Toledo, Ohio, where it scrambled to accompany the plane back to Toronto's Pearson International Airport. One of the passengers on board told Millennium TV News, We heard him speaking. We heard him yelling. He was being pretty belligerent, using a lot of curse words. He said he didn't care what happened to the plane or the people on it, and he didn't like Canada, didn't care about Canada. He didn't care about the consequences of his own actions. He literally didn't care if the plane went down. Once the plane landed just before 9 a.m., a local SWAT team boarded the jet, ordered everyone to keep their heads down and hands up as they cleared the plane and arrested the suspect. Millennium TV, Lay Mohammed. Minister Sheikh Hasina held a press conference Saturday on the outcome of her just concluded visit to the United Kingdom. Basically what I feel that poverty reduction, education and job opportunity, if we can create that, then naturally the child marriage will reduce. I have plans to take free educational step in for adults and girls up to graduation level. Up 
absolutely clear about what we are trying to achieve. It is such a simple but noble and good ambition. And that is to outlaw the practices of female genital mutilation and childhood and early forced marriage, to outlaw them everywhere for everyone within this generation. That is the aim. That is the ambition. Thank you for watching Millennium Headlines and we'll see you next week.